Watch this video if you are preparing for AWS Associate Certifications. For sample questions and information, visit aws.letsmock.com. Today we will cover S3 which is Simple Storage Service. S3 scales horizontally by splitting data into partitions based on high request rates and number of keys in a partition. So always use key names which will spread the load around rather than hash to the same partition. S3 is designed for 99.99% durability. So if you store 10,000 objects with S3, you can on an average expect to lose one object every 10 million years. S3 is designed, designed to sustain concurrent loss of data in two facilities. S3 is secure by default. You can configure S3 buckets to automatically encrypt objects while storing them. Also, you can use your own encryption libraries to encrypt data before storing in S3. In S3, you pay per storage used. You pay based on the storage type. For example, the amount you pay for Glacier is less than that of S3 One Zone IA, which is less than S3 Standard IA, which is less than S3 Standard Storage. Storage prices also vary based on request and data transfer fees. Requests are basically the HTTP put, copy, post or list. So even if you fire a list request, you have to pay. Cost of get is more. The only type of request which are free are delete. For request, pricing varies by region. For certification, it is very important to understand different use cases suitable for S3 and also the use cases for which we cannot use S3. S3 is more suitable for static website hosting, for storing photos, videos, if you have big data pipelines or for storing backups in case of disaster recovery. You cannot use S3 for real-time use cases such as installing operating system, running a database on S3. You cannot mount S3. Object storage is an architecture that manages data as objects. It is different than block storage which manages data as blocks. The design principle of object storage is to abstract lower, layer, lower layers of storage away from application and admins. Data is exposed and managed as, as an object instead of files or blocks. In S3, one single object cannot be more than 5 terabytes. This is a huge for one object. S3 objects are managed using API built on top of HTTP REST. For example, uh, HTTP delete to delete object, get to get, post or put to store an object. If the object size is bigger than 100 MB, you must use multipart upload. The largest object input cannot exceed 5 gigabytes. S3 objects are stored inside a bucket. Inside a bucket, you can store a limited number of objects. Bucket name is globally unique, which means if I create a bucket with some name, you cannot create another bucket with the same name. It is similar to domain like domain names like google.com. Nobody else can use it. Default upper limit is 100 buckets per account. You need to contact AWS in case you want to increase it. For most use cases, 100 is a lot because one bucket can hold unlimited number of objects. You usually end up creating one bucket per environment. When creating a bucket, we need to specify region. You may ask if bucket name is globally unique, why do we need to provide the region? The object is replicated across multiple locations within a region. So even if a particular location goes down, still the object will be available from different locations. Data locality is important in case of big data workloads to minimize the latency. Some countries may have compliance requirements wherein the data needs to be stored within the country's region. So bucket name are globally unique. So it is important to understand the bucket name rules. In the exam, there will you will be given sample bucket names and you need to identify valid and invalid bucket names. Once you create a bucket, you cannot change the bucket name or the region. Bucket name must be at least three characters 
and cannot be more than 63 characters long. It can contain only lowercase letters, numbers, and hyphens. S3 can store any kind of objects. Object could be binary, text, image, it doesn't really matter. When you operate, you are working on one entire object. For example, you just cannot edit few lines in text file stored on S3. You need to overwrite the entire object. An object has two parts, the actual data and the metadata. Metadata is basically key value pair. Metadata again is of two types, user metadata inserted by the user. Note, it can be inserted only during the creation time. System metadata is created and used by AWS. Inside a bucket, we can have unlimited objects. These objects are identified uniquely by key name. Key name can contain alphanumeric, alphanumeric characters and also special characters including slashes. Each S3 object can be identified with a unique URL called object URL. The object URL has endpoint, bucket name, and key name. In the exam, you will be given object URLs and you need to identify bucket name and key name. S3 is eventual consistent, which means if you delete an object and immediately fire get, the request, uh, the object may still be available for some time. Another example is if you update an object and immediately get it, it may return the old object. For example, it is, uh, for exam, it is important to understand the eventual consistency. S3 has different storage classes and the pricing durability varies based on the storage class. The default storage class is S3 standard. It offers high durability, availability and performance for frequently accessed data. The data is replicated in at least three availability zones. S3 Standard IA or infrequent access is for data that is less frequently accessed. Here too data is replicated in at least three ability zones. It has low per GB storage price and low per GB retrieval fees. Standard IA is designed for lower ability which is 99.9% whereas standard is 99.99%. The minimum capacity charge per object is 128KB. Which means even if your object is only 10 KB, you will pay for 128 KB. So you need to think if you have small, small size objects, a lot of small size objects. Also, the minimum duration is 30 days. So you should not use it if you want to store data only for 10 days. In exam, you will be given a use case. Like we need to store data only for 5 days, but is less frequently accessed. So which storage class should be used? In this case, you should be you should not use S3 IA. Instead, you should use standard. So always think of minimum requirement of S3 IA as well. S3 one zone IA, as name suggests, is stored only in one zone. It does cost twenty percent less. One zone IA should be used for storing data, which can be easily reproduced and does not need availability and resiliency. Also, it has same like similar. Charges of 128 KB minimum per object. Thank you guys. Please like, share and comment and also check out aws.letsmock.com for sample questions. Thank you.